Hey everybody, how are you? Cheers. Okay, I'm gonna answer a question that I got sent to me by email and uh, we'll take it from there. Hold on a second. The question, okay. Is it okay that I'm not a professional in these technologies, HTML, CSS, JS, PHP, and can I make money? Yeah, I don't feel like I'm good enough, blah, 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 blah. This is somebody who is looking at WordPress development, but I think it goes to any type of development, I suppose. Not I suppose, it goes to any type of development. Here's the misconception that a lot of beginners at software development may have. They may think that they have to be 100% knowledgeable about each of these languages, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, uh, PHP, or some other backend language, whether it be Java or C Sharp or Ruby or Python, whatnot, depending on what you want to do. I've talked about this in many other vlogs. Bottom line is that you don't have to be an expert in each of these languages. You have to have competent knowledge, meaning you're able to build some apps with them. So since we're talking about HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and we'll just stick to PHP since we're on subject here, you just have to be comfortable with them. Not 100% knowledgeable, not know everything about the libraries, not know all the various uh, variations of the tags and every CSS rule ever invented. That you'll get into as you develop projects. The key to development is just to have a base line level of skill so, you, so that you can produce and then you just go from there. That's why I always emphasize the basics in my course. My course is, my course is not my course, but my course is because the key to learning all this stuff, again, is always in having a firm understanding of the basic concepts and techniques. So you understand you know, functions and arrays and collection types, iteration, you understand object-oriented programming, you understand good structure for your apps and so on. What you're going to discover, discover as you get into app development or WordPress professional development, if we're talking about that, is that you're going to always be, not always, but you're going to be learning new things along the way. It's, it's very typical for even the most experienced developers to have to learn a new library or figure out a new API, etc., as the projects come to them, which separates the novice programmers from the expert programmers is how they approach an app in terms of writing it and how they structure their, their code, not, it, not in terms of, of how many libraries they know, right? So let me say, say that again, try to be more clear. What separates the professional developers from the amateurs, the professionals write professional code. Not that they know more libraries, they write professional code. And I'll give you an example. Back in the 90s when I was learning programming uh, for the first time, and I learned, I think it was either JavaScript was my first language or it was my second language. And JavaScript, JavaScript just came out. And what I did for quite a while, I don't know, or six months or so, is I just read books on JavaScript, a few that there were, and uh, one of these big, huge, thick computer books. And somebody would come to me and say, how do you do this in JavaScript? And I said, oh, you just you use this, this function here, or you do this there, you know? I had a pretty good theoretical understanding of what was involved in terms of the J JavaScript, what, what the uh, libraries were and so forth. But I remember sitting down at the computer for one of the first times to actually write JavaScript code and I, I couldn't do it. Even though I knew all these libraries and oh, if you want to do this, you just go here. But I couldn't write code because I didn't write code. and that, was a confirmation of something I had learned originally in martial arts that what separates the great fighters from the not so great fighters. The great fighters have a great understanding and a deep understanding of the basics, the basics of fighting, timing, tactics, 
power, speed, uh, et cetera, et cetera. There's a few other things as well. Not the number of techniques you have. What you see in martial arts, you got these people who know like hundreds of, hundreds of techniques, dozens of forms, but they couldn't fight their way out of a paper bag. A small little kitten would give them a hard time. Meanwhile, you can have a well-trained Thai boxer or a well-trained boxer. I'm just throwing those out, which, you know, they have very simple or a limited number of techniques in the, in the traditional sense. But because they actually train to fight and they understand timing tactics and they develop their speed and their power and their mental and physical conditioning, these are all the things that really make a great fighter. Not the number of techniques, because you'll see in martial arts, in all different styles, usually a fighter will have one or two, maybe three techniques that they do really well and they just pull off over and over and over again, and they're quite effective. Now, as a professional fighter, you have to be aware of you know, the whole, the whole game. You have to be aware of what people might try to pull on you so that you can defend against it. But if you really observe the great fighters, they usually just do a handful of things and that's it when they actually execute in the ring. Software development is similar in the sense where, the, again, you can take a great and an advanced programmer and put them in any programming environment, any framework, even old stuff. Put them on old Java servlets and POJOs and they'll produce a good app even though it's a very old technology versus a noob who jumps into cutting edge, no JS, and they'll produce garbage code because they're just beginners. So back to the original question. Do you have to be a master of all these languages to be able to be a professional developer to go out there and make money? No, but as a developer who's new to the game, your level of, of uh, pro your productivity level rather, is much more limited than somebody who makes, who's got a few years experience on you, who's able to work much more quickly, much more efficiently, the code is better. So they're gonna command more money for their time versus a beginner, but that's just the way it goes. You start off, you start off first couple of projects, you don't make anything, you do freebies, and you start making, uh, you know, minimal amounts and you move up from there. I'm not specifying dollar amounts because it depends on where you live, right? If you're in India, there's a, you know, an entry level developer will make X. If you're in North America, an entry level developer will make Y, et cetera, et cetera, because of cost of living and so on, right? To rent or buy a place uh, in different parts of India is gonna be cheaper than buying some place in San Francisco to cite extreme examples. Anyway, I hope that helps. Bye-bye.